kiddos. Welcome to your week two homework review. Today we are looking at our least common multiples. We have three of those. We're also looking at our greatest common factors. Now up top, I'll give you some notes to remind you that factors are few. They're the numbers we're multiplying together to make this number. Multiples are many. Think skip counting. I can skip count by a number indefinitely. It can go on forever and ever. So let's start looking at our multiples. When we are looking at our multiples, I suggest doing the multiples for the larger number first. They grow the fastest. And usually this helps us find the larger factor and know what to look for in the smaller number. I'm sorry, multiple. So we have 12, 24, 36. At that point, I can stop because I know that if I skip count by eights, I'm also going to get 24. So for 12 and 8, least common multiple, skip counting, first number they both have is 24. Popping down to our next one, we have 8 and 30. Again, I suggest starting with the larger number. We have 30, 60, 90, 120. When I skip count by 8s, I have 8, 16, 24, 32. They're not all going to fit. 40, 48, 56, 64. 72, 80, 88, 96, 104, 112, 120 is going to be our least common multiple. Down to 3 and 40. Skip counting by 40. I have 40, 80, 120. I know. I see this 12. I see this 3. I know 120 is going to be it because 3 is going to divide into 12 evenly. So I know, even without skipping, that my least common multiple is going to be 120. If I wanted to skip count, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, 54, 57, 60, 63, 66. You get the point. We keep going. We're going to get to 120. Now let's pop back up to our factors, okay? Factors are few. These are the numbers that we can multiply to get 16, the numbers that we can multiply to get 96, starting with either because either way, you're going to have to do your factors. For 16, we have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. For 96, we have quite a few. I have 1 times 96, 2 times 48, 3 times 32, 4 times 24, 6 times 16, and 8 times 12. Now I go back and look at what I have. I'm looking for the biggest number they have in common. I always start with the shortest list. So my biggest number at the top is 16. I also see that, whoa, did not mean the eraser. I also see that down the bottom, we had six times 16. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna highlight those because those are going to be my greatest common factor. So greatest common factor of 16 and 96 is 16, popping over to six and 32. We know that six does not have a ton of factors. One times six, two times three, the end, right? But our 32 is going to have a lot more. We have 1 times 32. We have 2 times 16. Actually, one more set. 4 times 8. Looking to see what they have in common. Largest number is 6. Is 6 in the bottom? No. Next largest is 3. Is 3 in the bottom? No. We're going to go with 2 on this one. Greatest common factor of 6 and 32 is 2. Down to 12 and 57. 12 is 1 times 12. 2 times 6 and 3 times 4. 57 is 1 times 57 and 3 times 19. Starting with the largest number, is 12 at the bottom? No. Is 6? No. Is 4? No, it's going to be 3. Our greatest common factor for this set is 3. If you have any questions on this homework, please send me a message or bring them with you to class. At this point, you can stop the video. This is the end of homework review one. There will be another set. Feel free to ask questions. All right, kiddos, let's take a look at this. We are looking at least common multiples and greatest common factors. So let's begin. We have 30 and 20. If I skip count by two and I skip count by 30, our least common multiple is going to be 30, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You get the point. We get all the way to 30. Coming down here, least common multiples of 12 and 20. 
If I skip count by 12 and I skip count by 20, my least common multiple is 60. Now we're going a little bit quicker on these because we were more in depth in the last video. Feel free to re-watch if you need to. If we skip count by six and we skip count by 40, our least common multiple for this set is going to be 120. So we have 30, 60, 120. Coming up top to our factors. Remember, factors are few. These are the numbers that we can multiply to make three, multiply to make 30. We're looking for the largest number they have in common. The greatest common factor of three and 30 is three. Looking at 33 and 22, you might notice that common factor is 11. There's nothing larger. And then the last set, 28 and 63, greatest common factor for these is going to be seven. So we have 30, three, 11, 60, 120, and seven. Again, we went more in depth in the last video. So if you're still having a little trouble, please pop back and rewatch that part. If you have any questions, please bring them with you to class. That is the end of this review video. Please stop. The link will be provided to you again when you need it. All right, so faces, new homework, new topic. We are looking at the distributive property using greatest common factor. When we are distributing, what we're doing is we're taking our amount and we're not changing it, right? So if I take my 36 and 18, what I want to do is pull out a great our greatest common factor, which for this one is 18. And I want to distribute it to the numbers inside my parentheses. That's what we call it, distribute, right? I'm distributing the 18 to me multiplied by both of these numbers. All right, friends. So let's take a look. We are looking at 35 and 42 to start. 35 and 42. When I write out my factors for 35 and 42, I have one times 35, five times seven. I have one times 42, two times 21, three times 14 and six times seven. The greatest number that they have in common with these is going to be seven. It's seven. So if I pull out my seven, I need to figure out what I need to multiply by to get 35. So seven times what gives me 35? The answer is five. Seven times what gives me 42? The answer is six. So if I put it, rewrite this as distributive property, we have seven times five plus six. Popping over to 30 and 40. We're looking for the common factor for these. Our greatest common factor is going to be 10. Again, if you need a little extra explanation on greatest common factor, pop back a little bit earlier in this video. So if our greatest common factor is 10, we need to figure out what can we multiply by 10 to get 40? 10 times four gives us 40. What can we multiply by 10 to get 30? 10 times three gives me 30. So if I distribute this, 10 times four is 40, 10 times three is 30. That is my distributive property rewritten. Over here, we have 14 and 18. Our greatest common factor is two. Put that outside of your parentheses. Ask yourself the question, two times what gives me 14? The answer is seven. Two times what gives me 18? The answer is nine. So two times seven plus nine. All right, love bugs. 36 and 24, my greatest common factor is 12. Pull out my 12. Think through the multiplication. 12 times three gives me 36. 12 times two gives me 24. All right, we have 18 and nine. Our greatest common factor with this one is nine. Pull out the nine. Talk yourself through the multiplication. Nine times two gives me 18. Nine times one gives me nine. So nine times two plus one. And then our last one, you guys know I love to keep you on your toes. The greatest common factor of 40 and seven is one. It is one. So we pull out our one. We can still rewrite this. One times what gives me 40, that's 40. One times what gives me seven, that's seven. One times 40 plus seven is our answer for this one. If you have any questions, please send me a message or bring them to me at the start of your next class. That is the end of this review video. All right, Nuggets, 
Next up on the rewrite using distributive property. This is going to be a little bit quicker because the last one is the same thing. So we're looking at 50. We're looking at 30. We want to pull out the greatest common factor that's going to be 10. So 10 times what gives me 50? It's 5. 10 times what gives me 30? It's 3. This can be rewritten as 10 times 5 plus 3. Sliding over, 21 and 42, our greatest common factor is 21. So the 21 comes out on the outside. 21 times 1 gives me 21. 21 times 2 gives me 42. I can rewrite this as 21, 1 plus 2. 21 times 1 plus 2. 4 and 8, our greatest common factor is 4. Bring out the 4. Fill in the blanks. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 plus 2, rewritten. Over to 3 and 12, our greatest common factor is 3. Pull that out, rewrite. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 2. 3 times 1 plus 4. All right, and then over to this one, we have 16 and 2. Our greatest common factor is 2. Pull it out, rewrite. 16 times, eight, I'm sorry, 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 8 plus 1, rewritten. And then our last one, greatest common factor is 1. Pull it out, rewrite. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 19 is 19. So rewritten, it's 1 times 8 plus 19. That is the end of this homework video. You can go ahead and stop here. If you are in the two-day week class, this is the end of your homework. Have a fantastic weekend. For those of you that are with me for the three-day class, you have one more assignment. All right, Nuggets, this one was a little extra for my three-day-a-week class. So if you did the two-day-a-week class and you don't understand prime factorization, that's okay. This is something that I covered with the three-day-a-week class. It is not a necessary standard, but it is one that I wanted to touch on just to give them a little bit of background. So if you did not learn this in class, but you want to follow through, this is a pretty easy skill to learn. You are welcome to listen. So prime factorization, the important word being prime, we need to know our prime numbers for this one. Remember a prime number is any number that its only factors are one and itself. Examples, two, three, five, seven, 11, 13. You can only multiply one times 13 to get 13. There are no other factors, so that is considered prime. So what we wanna do is we want to continue to break down this number and all of its pieces until all we are left with is prime. This is not the only correct answer or correct way to break this down, but the final answer, no matter what multiplication facts you use, should still be the same. I'll show you two examples on this first one to show you what I mean. So I can split 18 into two times nine. Two is prime, I circle it. Nine can be split into three times three. So I have two times three times three, Remember, when I have repeated numbers, I can write them as an exponent. This is the same as 2 times 3 squared, okay? But like I said, this is not the only way that you can do this. If I chose to break this down differently, because I can use any set of factors. So if I broke 18 down to 3 times 6 and broke 6 down to 2 times 3, I still end up with 2, 3, and 3. That's what I mean that it's not the only correct way. It's just one of many ways, okay? As long as you're still getting that same ending point, it's fine how you got there, okay? So 68, we can break this into 2 and 34. 2 is prime. We can break this into 2 and 17. They are both prime. So we would write our final answer as 2 squared, because I have two of them, times 17. 63 can be split into 3 times 21. This is prime. Split again into 3 and 7. This would be written as 3 squared times 7. 
66 can be split into 3 and 33, which can be split into 3 and 11. This will be written as 3 squared times 11. 16 can be split into 2 times 8. That can be split into 2 times 4. This will be written as 2 squared times 4. And finally, 42 can be split into 2 and 21, which can be split into 3 and 7. This will be written as 2 times 3 times 7. That brings us to the end of our homework review for this week. If you have any questions, please send me a message or bring them with you to our next class. Have a fantastic weekend, Methley.